David Ubel and his wife Cindy bought this 170-acre property east of Cincinnati 15 years ago, and you can see why they named it Vista Grand. But the beautiful scenery came with a price. To keep the land zoned agricultural, businessman David and nutritionist Cindy would also have to raise some kind of agricultural product. When you buy farm property, you have to do something with it. You can't just, you know, live on it and do something. You have to raise something. So we chose Buffalo because it was below maintenance. You didn't have to really be around that much, and they needed a lot of space. When we bought the place in 94, we decided we needed livestock that was rather independent, um, not requiring a lot of upkeep because of my busy travel schedule. I'd be typically gone two weeks at a stretch, and the animals had to take care of themselves while they were here. Uh, this started off as a hobby. It, we thought it'd be fun to uh, watch the calves out in the field uh, over breakfast in the morning. And when we got to 85 head, we realized we had a business here. One of the reasons that we chose to do buffalo is because whenever you do cows or pigs or sheep, you have to be around more, you have to feed them more. There's a lot more hands-on management of the animals. And buffalo, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do antibiotics. You don't have to do in vitro fertilization. You don't really have to do any type of hands-on production day to day. You have to make sure they're fed. You have to make sure they're happy so they stay in the fence. Staying in the fence is a very good thing. Raising buffalo is not that difficult. It's all the periphery projects, uh, keeping fence lines clean, keeping pastures cut. The animals themselves are not that labor intensive. With buffalo, you don't have to provide shade, you don't have to provide cover, you don't have to provide a barn, you don't have to provide really food. As long as you have enough fields, you don't have to graze corn. But the most important thing to me is I don't have to worry about where they are in the middle of the December when it's snowing six inches. I don't have to go out there and traipse them down and find them. But other people that have cows and other have to do that. They have to provide shelter and more care. And buffalo are just such great animals, I think, to have around in terms of farming and marketing it that you don't really have to do a whole lot. Our animals are free range. We do not confine them to a feedlot and we do uh, feed them strictly uh, grass. Some of the animals we do finish on corn uh, because people ask for that. I think the Midwest palate uh, likes that corn finished meat. We are raising them in a hormone free, antibiotic free uh, environment. So that is desirable these days. And I think the fact that it's a local product uh, creates huge demand. People now are beginning to ask where their meat comes from. And uh, to know it comes locally as well as chemical hormone free and low fat and the fact that buffalo was indigenous to this region of the country long before beef cattle came in makes it uh, the all-American product. But while buffalo's natural lifestyle and low impact on the environment were positives, the tipping point for Cindy was buffalo's high nutritional value. Actually, buffalo is a very nutritious product. Initially, I didn't mind promoting this product as a farmer person because as a dietitian, it's very high in protein, low in fat, and I could handle the decision to tell people it's a good product even though it's a red meat. Because red meat, by dietitian standards, is not something that we often tell people eat more of. <laughs> However, buffalo is um, higher in iron, it's higher in vitamin A, and it's higher in some calcium because it's grass-fed. So as a dietitian, I feel very comfortable in telling people eat more of this because it won't increase your heart disease, it won't increase your colon cancer, and it won't increase food allergies that you may have. Um, so it is actually been adopted by Weight Watchers and bariatric clinics and a lot of other weight management programs. Buffalo naturally are, are not marbled because their fat is distributed around the adipose of the animal, not intramuscularly. Um, Angus and beef cows are genetically altered to be marbled because that is seen as a higher quality product by USDA graders. Buffalo don't have that, they never will, they never have. Um, and so when you buy three ounces, you eat three ounces. Whereas when you buy five pounds of beef, you're only eating four pounds or three and a half pounds just because of the waste, because of the fat runoff when you cook it. And in fact, buffalo meat is rapidly gaining popularity at restaurants and markets whose customers are both health and taste conscious. Buffalo burger is actually one of our most popular lunch items and it outsells the sirloin burger three to one. And so what was originally a project of convenience has become a way of life for this Ohio family. 
We continue to stay on the farm and create agricultural based businesses mostly because it's about the children and it's about where you want them to be and how you want them to grow up. And Emma, our daughter who's 12, has really blossomed living on a farm. She is a farm kid and farm kids are different. They grow up differently, they think differently, they solve their own problems and that is a huge big deal to us is to how we want Emma to think and be and it's a big part of why we continue to stay on the farm.